Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing out your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him. The grace, the love, and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So I welcome you all, especially those who are watching online, because there are not many people in front of me, um, to St. Ignatius Day Mass. Today is the Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And for us here at St. George's College, it's a very important day, because St. George's is a Jesuit school. St. Ignatius was the founder of the Society of Jesus of the Jesuits. I know that I was at school here with Brendan. Um, so it's a special day for us. And it also is a special day because in the Society of Jesus, we Jesuits are celebrating 500 years of the conversion of St. Ignatius. He was converted, he went, underwent a, a, a very strong conversion, completely changed his life. And that happened in 1521, so 500 years ago. So we pray in this Mass that we may be inspired by his life, by his spirituality, by his teaching, and that we may live by it, so that we can be people for God, doing everything for the greater glory of God, and people for others, trying to bring God's love, God's justice, God's peace into our world to other people. So let's begin our Mass. Conscious, sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes we're very selfish. We just think of ourselves. Um, sometimes we're sinful. We do things we shouldn't be doing. So let's begin by asking pardon for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he free us from all our sins, and may he bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. It's a big day today, so we will sing the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever. 
great man, St. Ignatius of Loyola. And we thank you for his conversion, which happened 500 years ago, whereby he completely changed his life and devoted the rest of his life fully to the service of God and God's people and God's creation. And we thank you that we're still beneficiaries of that conversion through the many schools, the universities, the social works, the retreat centers, that are run by Jesuits because of the inspiration of St. Ignatius. We pray, Lord, that you may inspire us also with that same spirit you gave him so that we too may commit ourselves to God and to the service of others. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now let's listen to our readings. Um, first readings from Philippians, and Paul is saying, when I look back at my life, I see that all the things I was chasing after are just rubbish. Don't mean anything. Now that I've found Christ, I've found what I've always been looking for, and as I look forward to my life, all I want is to follow this Christ. That's exactly what happened to St. Ignatius. And in the Gospel, we'll be hearing that Jesus sends out his disciples. You've heard the good news, you've been with me, now bring that to other people. Bring it to people, bring the good news, bring justice and peace and love uh, into the world. And that is exactly also what St. Ignatius was doing. So let's listen to our first reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I believe nothing can happen that will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Christ my Lord. For him, I have accepted the loss of everything, and I look in everything as so much rubbish, if only I have Christ and be given a place in him. I'm no longer trying, to, I'm no longer trying for perfection, but my own efforts the perfection that comes from the law. But I want only the perfection that comes through faith in Christ and is from God and based on faith. All I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to share his sufferings by, by, the reproduce, by reproducing the pattern of his death. This is the way I can hope to take, this is the way I can hope to take my place in the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have become perfect yet. I have not yet won, but I am still running, trying to capture the prize for which Christ Jesus captured me. I can assure you, my brothers, I am far from thinking that I have already won. All I can say is that I forgot the past and I, and I strain ahead for what is still to come. I am racing for the finish, for the price to which God calls upwards to receive in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore, the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say some words about St. Ignatius and how he's relevant to us today. I presume most people watching online will be students of St. George's College. So I'm addressing this to everybody, but particularly to you students of this college. As I said, Ignatius lived 500 years ago, but in many ways, his life, his teaching, his example, his spirituality is still very relevant in, in our present world. And I'd like to just say something about that. There's so much to say, but I'd just like to say three things, three fundamental questions that Ignatius asks us and answers for us. And they're fundamental to our spiritual life, to our personal life, to the happiness of our lives. Those three questions we can say are what, second one, how, third one, who. Let's look at what. First question is what. What's my life all about? What is the meaning of my life? What is the purpose of my life? Is there a direction in my life? If there's no direction in my life, as the saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. You just go around in circles. When we look at our world today, if you ask most people, let's face it, and you ask them, what are you looking for? What's the meaning of your life? What's the purpose of your life? What's your life all about? Most people would say, make money, build a big mansion, drive a fancy car, success, achievement, honor, popularity, celebrity, power. Those are the things most people are chasing after. Those are the things that St. Ignatius chased after when, in his younger days. 
if you read his autobiography, he says, that's exactly what I was chasing after. But when he underwent that conversion in 1521, as he was lying on his sickbed, he started to think about his previous life. And he said, you know, when I thought of honor and being famous and marrying the most beautiful woman in Spain and being successful and a big fish, yeah, it gave me a kind of thrill, but then it petered out and it left me feeling so empty, so empty and superficial. It didn't give me the joy that I'm really looking for. But then I saw that life is more than that. There's a much bigger world, a much higher reality, a transcendent reality that really satisfies our deepest longings. He calls it God. We call it God. And the things of God, all the things that we attribute to God, we say God is love, God is peace, God is goodness, God is justice, God is truth. That that is a much higher reality, a much bigger world. The other things, they all end. They don't last. And you feel empty. But these things, if you commit yourselves to these things, that's what gives you a deep inner peace and a joy and a happiness. He calls it consolation. You feel a deep consolation. And he says, it doesn't peter out. He says, from the time that happened to me to the time this autobiography is written, it never left me. And I've lived my whole life out of it. He says, that's the foundation of our life. That is the principle and ultimate meaning and purpose of our life. The principle and foundation. You build on that foundation and do everything that you do in light of that foundation. That's where you're going to find happiness. And that's where you're going to bring happiness into the world. Uh, the, the, into the world. So... That's the principle and foundation. That's the answer to the what question. What's my life all about? So I'd like to encourage, especially the students of here, that you make that principle and foundation the ultimate source of all that you do. As Ignatius says, do it all out of that, all for the greater glory of God. The light has been, the, the fire has been lit your time here at St. George's College. Through the Ignatian ethos that runs through this college, through the liturgies and the prayer that we have together here uh, in, in the chapel, um, through our service programs for others, that fire has been lit. Don't let that fire go out. And when you leave school and go to the future, don't let that fire go out. That fire will warm you. That fire will inspire and motivate you. That fire will, show, will light your path and show you the direction to follow in life. Once the fire goes out, you're in the darkness and you stumble around and you can make a real mess of your life. So that's the first, the, the first thing, the what question. The second question is the how question. How do I keep that fire burning? How, how should I live my life? What should I do? Ignatius says, well, pretty obvious. If the principle and foundation is what your life is all about, then do everything that is in consonance with that principle and foundation. Put yourself completely and wholly and fully into whatever you do in service of that principle and foundation. Whatever you do. When you're studying here at, at St. George's, put yourself fully into it, fully into the present now, into the present moment. Be fully engaged and put yourself fully into it, into your studies, so that you can broaden your mind to the wider horizons and see the beauty and goodness of God all around you. When you're praying in chapel, put yourself fully into it 
so that you can expand your heart and experience that love of God in your heart as Ignatius did, and that you can bring that to other people. When you're playing on the rugby field and the cricket field, put yourself fully into it. Feel the exhilaration of your body as you run with the ball. Feel the joy of interacting with the others that you're playing with. Ignatius calls that magis, magis. 100%, give yourself 100%. And that's what he did. Look at his life. After his conversion, he said, what does God want me to do? My principle and foundation, God and the service of God. What's he calling me to do? And then when he said, God, I think is calling me to study so that I can be more learned and I can bring the gospel to people. He put himself fully into the studies. He went to school with little kids. He was 30-something, and there were these little boys learning Latin and stuff. Then he went to different universities, to Alcala, to Salamanca, to Barcelona, and to one of the best universities at the time in Paris. And he got his master's. He put himself fully into it. When he was serving people, he had a great heart for the poor, reaching out to the poor, going to the sick, helping the sick to the hungry, put himself fully into it. And even when he was elected as general of the Society of Jesus and had to run the society, which was growing at a phenomenal rate, he had to do a lot of administrative work, running this institution. He had to produce constitutions for that institution. It's not a nice job sitting in an office. He was a man of action but he put himself fully into it. And he produced these wonderful constitutions for the Society of Jesus, which we still use today. And it came not just from his head, it came from his heart, came from his prayer. He put himself fully into it. So I'd encourage you all, especially students of St. George's, when you're thinking of your future, don't waste your time. Don't waste your life. We live in a culture which is a very scattered and distracted culture. I see it at the university where I'm teaching. Social media is wonderful. I wouldn't for a moment say we should abolish social media. No. Information technology, IT, and all these gadgets that we have are wonderful. They're making information so available to us. But there's a danger. They can make us very distracted people. We're constantly being stimulated by outer stimulations, running from one thing to another. I see it in the students. They've got wires coming out of their ears and music blasting in their ears. They're on their tablets and cell phones and iPhones and... Uh, going from one platform to another, we're becoming a distracted and a scattered people through this. We are forgetting the inner journey, to do the inner journey where we experience the God within, and from that, that we can go out to others. We can't sit still. We can't keep quiet. We can't go within. We're always out of direction. So, I really encourage you, don't waste your time, don't waste your life. Practice marches, put yourself fully into everything you do. We only get one opportunity in this life, don't waste it. You know, in the Shona there's a proverb, Chawawana bati sisa, kaviri. You only get one chance, make the most of it. Finally, let's look at the who question. Who am I doing all this for? Who for? Well, let's face it, the world in which we live, the answer is, it's for me. We live in a very individualistic world. Everybody is, it's about me. It's all about me. And we live in a competitive world. I've got to be number one. I've got to be at the top of the pile. 
Let me push the others down. It's all about me. What Ignatius discovers says, no. If you've discovered the principle and foundation and that God is the foundation of your life and God is love, it's not all about you, little me. It's not all about you, the little me. It's about love. And love, you know, when we're in the little me, we build a wall around ourselves. It's just me, 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 me. You keep out. It's all about me. Love breaks down the walls. The love goes beyond the little me. It reaches out. And the strange thing about love is, the more you give, the more you get. You've got to get out of the little me and give. And then you find, not the little me, but the true self. The true self in God. And that's where you find the joy and the happiness. The more you can give of yourself, the more of the true happiness, not the little pleasures, but the true happiness of life. So Ignatius says, be people for others. Well, Father Arupe really coined that. And it's one of our slogans as Jesuits. We are people for others. It's not just about me. It's about others. It's about love. About reaching out to this bigger world into which God is calling us. So again, to, I'd encourage, especially young people who are studying, when you're thinking about the future, what am I going to do with my life? What career do I want to follow or profession? Don't just ask, what's in it for me? I'll be a doctor, because if I have private practice, I can make a lot of money. Yes, of course we need money. Nobody can live without money. Money is not bad. But it's not just about the money. Ask yourself and say, I want to be a doctor. Because if I'm a doctor, I can reach out to people. I can help sick people. I can bring health and happiness to people. That's why I want to be a doctor. If you want to go into politics, God help you, um, if you want to go into politics, don't say, well, politics, good way. It's a good way to climb the ladder. It's a good way to get influence, good way to find power. Power is money. I'll build a mansion, probably several mansions. That's not what it should be about, Ignatius says. If you want to go into politics, yes, that's good. But go into politics because I want to build a better Zimbabwe. A Zimbabwe based on justice and truth and love and compassion for people. Not just because I want to climb the ladder and I want to benefit for myself. So, those are three things I think we get from St. Ignatius. And really, if we can listen to them, pray them, appropriate them for ourselves and live our lives out of them, how different our lives would be, how happy we would be, and how different the world would be if people could live by these things. What a, what a beautiful world we would build. Not the world I see when I watch the international news. Everywhere there's fighting and terrorism and also, you know, hurricanes and floods and COVID and it's all disaster. So let's pray that all of us can be inspired by St. Ignatius and to live by these principles that he teaches us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So it's, it's a feast. So let's pray the creed. Um, I don't think I know it by heart. Marim, you're going to have to help me. So let us pray the creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I, I believe in the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. First men for our salvation, even men for him.
of the scriptures, descended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, and again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I am the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, is risen through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I profess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So now, let us come to the Lord and bring our prayers, our petitions to the Lord. I shall start here and then Sisi will come with the petitions. Heavenly Father, in this Ignatian year, as we celebrate with gratitude the life of St. Ignatius, as we commemorate his, his cannonball experience, we seek your grace upon the college in its 125th year and upon the old Georgian Association in this centenary year. Hear now the prayers we humbly bring before you. We pray for Pope Francis, the imbued with the Holy Spirit. He may bring about a deeper understanding of his vision for the church and initiate dialogue towards healing and reconciliation. Lord, hear us. For the Society of Jesus, that it, that it be resolute, courageous, and prayerful in its works of the universal apostolic preferences. Lord, hear us. For lay collaborators of the society, that they grew into their understanding of their role as co-workers in the Jesuit mission and pursue it zealously. Lord, hear us. For the college family past and present, and for all Georgians, that each person be inspired by the life of St. Ignatius. I identify and give thanks for the cannibal moments and see Christ anew in all things. Lord, hear us. For the world older, that governments and their citizens may realize the may realize the need for a more collaborative and tolerant, tolerant attitude towards others. Lord, hear us. For people suffering with COVID-19 and other illnesses, for healthcare workers, for essential service personnel, that the grace of healing, perseverance, and fortitude be abundant in their lives. Lord, hear us. For all you have died, that they may know the mercy of God and rest in his eternal presence. Lord, hear us. We pause in silence for our own petitions. prayers of thanksgiving, prayers to thank you for the life of St. Ignatius and the many treasures that he has given us. We thank you for this college, which is run by the Society of Jesus according to the ethos, the characteristics, and the values of Jesuit education. And we thank you for the 125 years of this college, St. George's College. So we come to you with all these prayers, and we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Lord, by the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in your divinity, you who humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to accept us in these gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Your hands, the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord God, we come to you in this Eucharist with these gifts of bread and wine, and we bring you ourselves, all our joys, all our hopes, but also our troubles, our sufferings, and our problems. And as you change this bread and wine into your body and blood, we ask you to change us, make us people who live according to the principle and foundation taught to us by St. Ignatius. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and, you, and Redeemer. And you have given us Saint Ignatius, who followed Jesus Christ with all his heart, Marjus. Jesus always showed love and compassion to children and to the poor, to sick and to sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. And this is what Saint Ignatius also did. By word and deed, Jesus announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Yes. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, 
we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, all the bishops, the priests and the deacons and the religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with the saints, particularly Saint Ignatius, whom we celebrate today, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him, with him, in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. You saw our lives are not just all about us, little me. It's about God, and it's about the kingdom that God is inviting us into. So let's pray together using the words Jesus himself gave us, asking that that kingdom really may come. So let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the good news. We live in a very troubled, a very wounded world where there's no peace in so many countries. So let's pray together now that Jesus may bring his peace to those troubled areas. So let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, the Spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. For communion, I'll put the body of Christ, the hosts on, on the tables. If anybody would like to receive the blood of Christ, you could do it by intention. I'll leave the chalice here. This is Jesus. He is our good shepherd. He knows each one of his sheep and he loves them so much that he dies for them. Happy are we who are invited to his banquet. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
And Jesus sent out his disciples and he said, go out to them and tell them the kingdom of God has come. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this Eucharist. We celebrated together on this important day the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Help us that by the graces that we've received in this Eucharist, that we may make you the principle and foundation of our lives, that we may do everything we do with all our hearts, margin, and that we may transcend 
the narrow boundaries of our little egos and go out to others in love that we may be people for others. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you, those of you who have come. Thank you for coming to celebrate this Eucharist together. And those of you who are online, thank you for this Eucharist. And may St. Ignatius inspire you. Bring fire into your lives. Bring fire into the world. The fire of God's love. So let's end our Mass now and ask for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the love and in the peace of Christ. Thank you.